Hello everyone, this is the Order. Welcome back to the Order of Celtic Templar, and welcome back to another Hydra video. And this time we are covering the 14th century Gallo Glass Levy. Now, I want to put this out here. Many people probably would only recognize the Gallo Glass Levy. Well, at this point in time period, I am actually not surprised there, because one, during this point in time, the 14th century Gallo Glass Levy were a very rare talk about subject, especially during the 14th century, because during the 1300s we had massive conflicts. Now, what were the Gallagher's levy at this point in time, you might ask? Well, that's quite an easy question to answer. They were actually, well, of, that, of the common class uh, people in parts of Northern Ireland and Western Scotland. In other words, I was pretty much just a peasant boy, and I'm serving in the ranks of the Gallagher's, and I'm hoping to one day make a name for myself and get riches beyond measure. So, that's why I joined the Gallagher's. Now, Gallagher's levy were of lower status uh, units. In other words, they didn't exactly get that much armor. If you all saw my last video on the levies of the 13th century, I highly recommend checking that out, in which the 14th century Gallagher's fared little better, as most of the time the only equipment they could afford would that be of a helmet or mail or a mail coif. In fact, it would be a rarity you would ever see them wearing both. But if they could wear it, they would wear it with a helmet and avantail. But if they wore something like this, a male coif, it would probably be by itself. Or the helmet would probably be by itself. Those that could afford it would be able to afford both. However, the Galagos levy at this point in time were a lot different compared to their, well, other century counterparts. In fact, the Galagos levy of the 13th century actually wore various equipment and actually, well, fought in the front ranks. But by the time of the 14th century, many of them had started to become archers, which is why you see me having a bundle of arrows here. They would also be a uh, volley men of, well, releasing that of slings. They would also hurl javelins at their opponents. So it was a massive amount. In fact, for every uh, Galaglass Noble, you actually had at least 400 Galaglass, and for every Galaglass, you had at least around 40 to 50 levies. So if you took that multiplication in, this is the number you would actually get of how many levies there would actually be for each local lord. So many of y'all would actually end up asking, okay Templar, how are these guys used in Battlefield? Did their equipment the upgrade? Yes, they would start to use gauntlets, but it varied from person to person if they could afford it. And most didn't have more than half of the time they couldn't, or more than half the time that they did, they were lacking in other equipment in other places. So, yeah. But why don't we get right into the video so that way I can get out of the seat, shall we?
Hello. 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 The Galadus Levy were that, as you saw, a multiple style of unit. Now, y'all saw me holding up a massive spear. Here's the thing. That was technically going to be my standard. I just didn't have a banner for it, so yeah. And in such, those type of levies that which would have been, well, more closely near to the uh, Gallo Glass Noble, for example, they would be known as the Retainer. And the Retainers, they would have helped out the Gallo Glass Noble, put on his armor, or kept his armor clean. And as well, many of these levies would have also, actually, ended up getting better pay. That meant I could have gotten better equipment like plate armor and such, but the mail would have been a lot more expensive. So, yeah. Now, as you also saw me moving around this equipment, I am... Uh, right now, it's the humidity outside, plus it's like 170 degrees. Not the best ideal weather, but the thing is, there is evidence to show that they might have actually dressed in this equipment at that time period, especially during the 14th century, because it was the hottest century in history, because that's how hot it was. Some men were known to drop dead from exhaustion. So, that's it's something. Uh, but yeah. Now I hear many people already asking, but Templar, how come the equipment of the Galagas levy is buried in units and units? Well, that's kind of obvious. They were of lower class, and most of them would have been archers, or uh, skirmish units that would have to attack the enemy, well, by the flanks. Not in the ranking mission of using a great Dane axe-like weapon. Now, you also saw me having a different style of shield. That's because, one, their shield started to evolve from the round shield to the iconic heater shield. But that's only if they were holding the standard. So, yeah. But we can see why the Galagos Levy kept fighting through and through history. But this is only the 14th century. So stay tuned with me to actually watch the 15th and then later into the said 16th and 17th century Galagos. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe for more. And as well, hopefully, you see you all in the next one. As well, uh, please help out Thing Thran. He needs our help right now. And as well, uh, if y'all have any words from history y'all want me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to add them to our list. So, hopefully see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all.